Hey everyone! Today we're going to learn how to make our own photographic textures in Photoshop with some special impressionistic brushes that I found online. I'm going to show you where to get them and how to use them and then we're going to walk through two examples, one with your own photo and another starting from scratch. So let's go! Alrighty, here we go! Wait, I'm not at my easel, am I? That's not gonna work. Okay, let's try the Wacom pen instead. Okay, let's start with where to get them. You're gonna go to Adobe, you have to be signed in. You're gonna go to products, Photoshop brushes.html, and there you will find all of the wonderful brushes that Kyle has put together for us. I suggest the Impressionist, maybe the watercolor, but do whatever you like. All right, let's paint. So after you've installed the brushes from Adobe, you should find them at the bottom of your brush list. Feel free to you know organize them however you like, just to make it uh, convenient for you. For this first example, I, I wanna create a texture with this sunset photo, but not because of the composition, which I'm about to completely and utterly destroy, but for the color palette. I just really love all the colors that are represented in this image and want to make a texture from them. So for this, I'm gonna be using one of the Impressionist smudge tools, which the smudge tools can be identified by the little pointing finger you know, so think about like finger painting where you're pushing color around. So anything that has that symbol is a smudge brush. So I'm going to use the Impressionist Blender 2 here to start with. So step number one, I want to duplicate my background. This is going to give me more options if it's in its own layer. So if you happen to struggle with Photoshop layers, I do have a full length class intro to Photoshop layers available in the description. So stay tuned later in the video, you'll see me using some of these layers in different ways. You may notice a little bit of a lag or a delay when you are using a very large uh, smudge or paint brush in Photoshop. It just depends on your computer and your processor, but don't be surprised if suddenly the brush seems to just kind of stop working or take its sweet time. The smaller the brush, the faster it will go. This is just something that I've noted over time and just, just be aware of it. Right here, I'm gonna select a, a regular impressionistic brush to actually paint instead of smudge. So I'm gonna sample and add colors to some of the empty areas of this image, and I'm gonna use one of the impressionist painting brushes like this one. Have fun, play like a kid, and just scribble away. So whenever I'm working on something like this, I like to color sample a lot for a nice variety of, of colors and textures. So think about, you know, potentially adding darker colors along the edge for an implied vignette. You know, whatever you want to do. The canvas is yours to experiment and create. And then you can go back to the smudge tool and then tap or, or click away at any of those uh, brush strokes that you just made. To blend them in. Zoom in, change the size of the brush, try tapping versus like clicking and dragging for longer strokes. You can see here where I'm dragging some yellow into the image where I want to add that yellow color and then mix it back in with the smudge tool. Go back and forth and add color wherever you think it's needed and then blend it in with one of the smudge tools. If I feel there's an area that is just dominated by a particular color or collection of colors, I can go back to my regular paintbrush and color sample again and just add a variety of color in that area to just break up the monotony. And then go back to my smudge tool again to kind of blend that in uh, with the rest of the image. I would experiment with different blending modes because you can actually use this brand new texture that you made. You can use it on the photo that is still beneath it. So you can change the blending mode and just add a texture that automatically has all of the same matching colors and tones that your original image has and, and just keep it on that photo. 
Okay, so if you want to go in and add an actual canvas texture uh, to your image, first you got to turn it into an 8-bit file, and then you go to the filter menu and click on the filter gallery, and then click on the texturize or the texturization. Make a bunch of adjustments, you know, just make it look the way that you want it to look, and then click OK. And there you have your own canvas detail. Look at how cool that looks. That is so neat and it's super easy. That's my favorite part. And just to double check and make sure that you didn't miss any areas of the smudging, turn off the background layer and you'll see exactly the little areas, typically along the edges that I tend to miss. Uh, you'll see them there and areas that you just need to kind of work on again and fix. Okay, for method number two, we're going to start from scratch. So we're going to just create a brand new document. You can make it any size or, you know, width or height that you want. And then open it up in Photoshop. Now, if you're having trouble, you know, kind of picking what colors you want to use, if you don't know a lot about color palettes uh, that you would want to try, go to Window and then click on swatches to make sure the swatches is open and then you can kind of go through the color swatches that are already defined in Photoshop for some inspiration or just a starting point. And this is pretty simple. You're just going to pick a, a brush that you want, watercolor, impressionistic, whatever it is that you decided to download from our buddy Kyle and you can just experiment with different textures, do a variety of different brushes in the same document, lots of colors. This is, you know, super easy to do, endless color combinations, endless texture combinations. The sky's the limit on your creativity and whatever, however much time you want to spend on making these. And once you're done, when you have the overall color that you want, you can go back to the blender brushes if you'd like to smudge it all together, or you can just keep the painterly textures and, and or the painterly strokes and keep adding more and more as you like. And don't forget that you've got other tools in Photoshop that you can use. You can try adding blurs, motion effects, more brush strokes, another layer with some different brushes, and then changing the blending mode. So that's what I did here. I actually added a blank layer and I changed the blending mode to color burn to actually accentuate some of, uh, some of these colors on a different layer. By all means, don't just stop here and make every texture exactly the same just with different colors. You can try all different types of, of brushes. You can try long sweeping strokes instead of this splattered look that you see in this image. Just have fun. And you can see here where I went back and added that texturizer in the filter gallery. So lots of options, lots of fun. I hope you guys enjoy this. If you want more painterly advice uh, in Photoshop, go ahead and check out this video up here and I will see you there.